Holyfield versus Riddick Bow. a special presentation of HBO Sports. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. I truly believe that it's the right, right time for me, and I, and I will be ready. It's going to be a war. When it's all said and done, and the smoke clears, I will be the new undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Conventional wisdom in this fight is that Holyfield will try to fight the big bow as he fought George and Buster Douglas, staying outside, jumping in with quick combinations. But sooner or later, a fight is going to break out here. It might be sooner. Left hook landed by Bo after a right. Holyfield seemingly in trouble for the moment. Evander Holyfield showing his warrior's heart. Believes he has Bo hurt. Oh, Holyfield in serious trouble now. And he's going to go down. Look at Holyfield. Reversing the tide of the battle. The champion now has Bo wobbling. Everybody in the Thomas and Max Center. The Mirage plays host as we come to you from the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Undisputed heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield defending his title against number one contender Riddick Bowe. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. Once again, a heavyweight title fight in this neon city, though this time we are indoors rather than nestled in an outdoor arena next to a casino hotel. A crowd of 18,000 awaits the fourth title defense for Evander Holyfield, a defense which now becomes the biggest test for respect in his two-year reign as champion. Can Evander Holyfield beat a heavyweight who is both younger and bigger than himself? That is what we're here to find out. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome back to HBO's World Championship Boxing and the Fight that almost everybody in the boxing world regards as the first live ammunition, full danger defense of the heavyweight championship for Holyfield. Here with me, as always, is HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, certainly a different atmosphere for this fight than with Holyfield's other title defenses. Largely, I suspect, because a number of people expect a change in the heavyweight championship incumbency tonight. Well, it's true. This hasn't been a very good month for incumbents. And I think uh, that all of these electrons of curiosity and excitement that are colliding around us are generated by the sense that we might get a change in administrations in the heavyweight division. And I agree, we're going to get a new champion. But which one? Is it going to be the young challenger Riddick Bowe or the champion who hopes to redefine himself in this fight, Evanda Holyfield? I've never been associated with a heavyweight championship fight, Jim, in which there was such evenly divided opinion, and yet all the opinions stated are without great conviction or passion. There's always a qualification in it. But uh, I'm tired of thinking about it and talking about it. I just want to see them get it on already. And maybe that atmosphere of uncertainty stems from the fact, Larry, that though he is an undefeated heavyweight champion, public disrespect and derision are now the primary elements in Evander Holyfield's public persona. Here now, a former heavyweight champion and still a heavyweight championship contender, George Foreman, Evander Holyfield's continued war for public respect. Good because it gives him constant motivation, or bad because it's bound to breed self-doubt? Well, I think none of the above. The guy, like Sonny Liston once told me when he lost to Muhammad Ali, people were saying, why didn't you whip him? Well, nobody loved me when I was champion, he said. Nobody appreciated me, so he had no reason to get up. Holyfield may be in that same position tonight. 
Does Bo, in fact, have the mental edge? We are about to find out. I want everybody to bow your heads, and I want you to focus on the red on Bo's trunks and the red tassels on his shoes. From time immemorial in Africa, red symbolizes royalty, rulership, and kingship. Mm, come on, that's right. Come on. In ancient Orient, in the Far East, red symbolizes power, and prestige, and wealth. And in the African-American liberation struggle, red symbolizes the blood, symbolizing the struggle of our people from time immemorial to overcome. Mm. And so then today, this red represents not just a replication of history, it is an actualization of prophecy because it prophesies the kingship and the rulership of, and the royalty of both. And so then we affirm, we don't come begging, we don't come asking, but we come affirming the rulership, the kingship, the royalty, the power, the, the influence of this great champion. Bo, as we bow our heads in prayer, eternal God, we pray now that you give the power that is within Bo, the replication of your strength and your power, that it might be in his hands and his eyes and his feet, that he might move the strength and the power that you've given him. That's right. And we claim the victory right now, That's right. not because of us, but because of you and the power that is within him. That's Here's right. the prayer we pray. Amen. Amen. Nobody said he was a Oh, you're the champion of the world. Champion of the world. I remember that. Oh, you're the world. Nobody said you were a world. You're the world. You're the world. Brooklyn-born, 25-year-old Riddick Bowe emerges first from his dressing room to go toward the ring for what is his first assignment in a world championship bout. Three and a half years into his professional career, just about on schedule, the way that he and his manager, Rock Newman, might have planned it after he left the Seoul Olympics in 1988 as the silver medalist, loser in the championship match to heavyweight contender Lennox Lewis. Jim, like a lot of challengers for the heavyweight championship, there are always unanswered questions. And sometimes they're answered affirmatively as George did once, as Muhammad Ali did, and sometimes they're answered negatively. I think it was best put by Eddie Futch when he says, Riddick Bowe has the talent to be a champion. How much does he want it? What are your memories, George, of your first entrance to the ring to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world? For the first time, Riddick Bowe is going to be carried into the ring. Beforehand, took himself into, but this is so great part of destiny and history. It takes over your life. The most frightening part is when you step on those steps, you walk up, you are taken into something that is history, almost mystic. It's frightening. Got to do it to do it. He's talked the talk, now he's walking the walk. Can he fight the fight? This moment is bigger than boxing itself, though. Sometimes it's or the stars gonna fall right for you. In an invocation in the dressing room before Bo exited to come into the ring, the holy man who blessed him said that the robe, the red robe and the red trim on his trunks and his shoes stood for royalty and rulership in ancient Africa, blood and sacrifice in the continued struggle to overcome of black Americans. Riddick Bowe's record, 31 professional fights. He has won them all, 27 by knockout. Two of the three world governing bodies rank him as the number one contender for the crown. And in a statement two days ago, Bowe dedicated his effort in this fight to fellow Brownsville, Brooklyn native, Mike Tyson. And now here comes the man who was, for two years, Mike Tyson's number one rated contender and seeming prime challenger for the crowd. Twice he signed contracts to fight Tyson. Three separate times he was ready to enter the ring against him because of injuries and ultimately Tyson's legal problems. The fight never took place. What you're looking at here is into the eyes of a man who 
who seems to be willing to walk through machine gun fire to get what he wants. We know this about Evander Holyfield. Either he will win or figuratively he will be willing to die in the attempt. We don't know that about his challenges. And George, you spoke of the sense of majesty and fear that must have carried Bo into the ring. Does Holyfield, at his more advanced stage of experience, feel it too? You know, it's strange because once you think you control it, you become part, you become used by it. Holyfield can step in the ring as though I am the champ and lose it all because it doesn't belong to anybody. It's the moment that counts. All three championship belts into the ring in advance of the heavyweight titleist. And now for the fifth time in his career, Evander Holyfield steps between the ropes for a heavyweight championship fight. There is the record, 28 wins, no losses, 22 knockouts. The first half of his career was spent seeking and earning the cruiserweight championship of the world. He won the heavyweight championship from Buster Douglas just a little bit more than two years ago. Come on, baby, we have Bo, we have Bo. Tale of the tape for Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bo. The numbers showing what everybody knows, Bo is the younger, bigger fighter of the two. Evander Holyfield has never won a tail of the tape or lost a fight. And here is our punch stat numbers, roughly the same, not a whole lot to choose between them in terms of how many punches they throw. Holyfield, the more accurate. And here you have the jabs. Bo throws more jabs. I wouldn't be surprised, Jim, if Holyfield tried to out-jab the jabber. Harold Letterman, the rules of this heavyweight championship belt. Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe will fight tonight using the rules of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. 12 rounds, three judges scoring the fight on a 10-point must system. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. You can be saved by the belt in the last round only, and only the referee can stop the fight. Jim? Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, main events monitor and Spencer Productions, in association with the undisputed king of beer, Budweiser, present the main event of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners, Nat Karasali, Bruce Lane, Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. Chief Inspector, Mark Ratner. Ringside Supervisors, representing the IBF, Walter Stone. The WBA, Manuel Landero. The WBC, Jeffrey Gildenhorn. Positions in attendance, Dr. Flip Homansky and Dr. Al Capana, along with Dr. James Wishgame. Timekeeper, Jane Broadfoot. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Mike Lasella. The scoring for this bout will be done on a three, a 10 point must system, and the three judges assigned to ringside are Chuck Jumpa, Jerry Roth, and Dalby Shirley. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the fight Working for the 52nd time in a world title match, referee Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of the Mirage. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, Fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, and weighing in at 235 pounds. This 1988 U.S. Olympian and silver medalist has a perfect professional record of 31-0. His two-handed punching power has earned him 27 KOs. And tonight, he stands on the threshold of greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, the number one heavyweight challenger in the world, Riddick. Daddy Bo!
and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red with black trim, and weighing an even 205 pounds. He's also a U.S. Olympian, a bronze medalist from the great team of 1984. He was the first of that team to win a world title as a professional. His record now stands at 28-0, scoring 22 knockouts and capturing two world championships. Tonight, he is appearing in his 11th world title bout, defending his heavyweight championship for the fourth time. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, this Georgia, you, baby. You're the presenting the undefeated, Jim, the conventional wisdom in this fight is that Holyfield will try to fight the big bow as he fought George and Buster Douglas, staying outside, jumping in with quick combinations. But sooner or later, a fight is going to break out here. It might be sooner. Hey, out and there. then which rules will apply? Will it be bigger man, bigger punch? A quick knockout for Riddick Bow? Or will it be the man with greater experience and ring guile who controls the action? That is likely to be Holyfield. First round begins, both men throwing jabs. There's a rule of thumb, don't jab with a jabber. And George Foreman, Riddick Bowe has one of the best jabs we've seen in the heavyweight division in the last two decades. And Evander Holyfield's corner realized that they stacked so much grease on his forehead, conceding they're going to get hit with a lot of jabs. Never seen a referee let that much grease go on. One of the wonderful things about Evander for spectators is that he is no great defensive fighter. He does get hit. So, for that matter, does Bo. Good left hook to the body by Evander Holyfield. And the left hook to the jaw. And Holyfield is quicker to the punch early in the fight. Riddick Bo smashing that jab into Holyfield's face. And he saw the champion flinch his head back just a little bit. Holyfield has started to throw combinations early because he doesn't like the idea of exchanging jab after jab. Bo should go right back to his left jab if he wants to stay in control of his fight. And you saw Holyfield land the right hand lead. The right hand lead is a big punch in his arsenal tonight. He believes the way to neutralize Bo's overwhelming right hand is to beat him to the punch with right hand leads of his own. And also to start hitting him and making him decide to forget about the jab, which he's doing a good job right now. He's starting with right hands early to get Bo to start in the exchanges Holyfield again scoring a combination so far this is a very good round for Evander who has been able to mount his attack and get away from Bo Bo has landed the jab but no power punches so far now Evander at this point is doing everything he's been told to do Bo hasn't established yet in his instructions with the corner what they want him to do just being Bo at this point. But if Bo stays out there at the end of Holyfield's jab, Holyfield remains far away at the end of Bo's jab, and that could be bad for the jab, George. Bo has just got to stay interested in the jab. Evander Holyfield has got to try to make this guy start fighting. Bo trying to land an uppercut. He believes that as Holyfield comes to him, he can neutralize the champion's rushes with those uppercuts. He lands the punch very effectively. Again, Holyfield scores with the left-right combination. Bo answers with one punch in return. And Holyfield again, getting the best of a center ring exchange. Now Bo lands the right hand for the first time in the fight. Both fighters getting off now in the latter stages of round number one. And maybe that fight, Larry Merchant, is about to break out. Holyfield has already warmed up, doing exactly what he wants. And Bo has close. an uncertain look on his face at the end of round one. Well, like I said, it might as well be sooner than later. Keep that jump. You know them sets of twos? Okay, they keep the set of twos going. Keep sticking and standing. Now you're doing a good job on the inside. Don't wrestle with him. Just let him throw you around. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
That's good. How you feel? Good. Box is beautiful out there, baby. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's good. Look, stick it in the chest too, man. Remember, all right? Okay. Double them up in the chest. Two in the chest, right? So we don't get All right, let's down. take a look at the exchange here and see how Holyfield is beating Bo to the punch early in this fight. What Holyfield is trying to do right now is send a message to Bo that this isn't like anything else you've been in before. Riddick Bo has never before been asked to fight at an intensity level with which Evander Holyfield is quite familiar over the course of his career. Holyfield has been in a lot of wars. Some people say too many. Riddick Bo just stay in instructions, use his jab, Occasionally throw a right hand to make him know that's not all I've got. Stay away from the exchanges. There was the right hand fight. lead again, George. He's landing that right hand lead. Is Holyfield the champion? Not only that, that left hook to the body, which hurts. Holyfield has got one of the best left hooks to the body I've ever tasted. So far, this has been a display of accurate, quick punching inside in combinations by the champion Evander Holyfield. And already, Bo begins to hold and hit, and they brawl in the center of the ring. Evander Holyfield showing his warrior's heart, believes he has Bo hurt. Bo throwing the right hand on the break. Joe Cortez says keep him up, the Bo fighters. Bo is taking no hostages. He's decided, look, if I'm going to win this thing, I've got to take it. The referee is not going to help me. The judges are not going to help me. Bo with the right hand over the top. Lancing blow. Come on. Come on. Holyfield on seeming to get a little bit of a rest here for a moment. At the same time, he's just sobbing a lot of punches from a big guy who's not a gentleman at all. Story of Evander Holyfield's life, though not this big, this strong, and this young before. Right hand over the top by Bo landed. Holyfield got an uppercut in. And the left hook for Holyfield. And the left hook for Bo. Both fighters landing consistently. Bo landed the jab, missed the right. Holyfield steps inside and gets in two good ones. Bo's got Evander Holyfield reaching in for his jab, which is what he wants. Bo trying to measure Holyfield from afar. Evander trying to step up inside and stay inside Bo's power. I think Evander just doesn't know exactly what to do right now. He's catching a lot of shots he wasn't told he would beat. Able to he's catch fighting the wrong there. fight, George. Oh, no fight. doubt about it. Why should he bump into this big guy and go slugging with him? Why should he? There's the uppercut again by Bo. Left hook by Holyfield. Missed the second one. Lands the right uppercut. Get the hands up. Get the hands up. Body punch by Holyfield. And a good one. I think those left hooks to the body by Evander Holyfield may be the most telling blows in the whole fight. Left hooks by Bo, two of them. Holyfield coming back, taking and giving shots. Bo tried to go to the body with the right hand, just missed. We can tell you that both fighters have went beyond their corners now. They're no longer taking instructions. They're doing what comes naturally. They're doing what comes naturally. Good right hand by Riddick Bo. Bo has answered some questions early in this fight he is showing a real willingness for combat on the inside i want you to go that double and triple left hook and then follow up with your right hand okay he's trying to lay inside what's about taking a step back in the bucket okay okay he in close bow lands a couple of short punches and seems quite happy to, to fight in exchanges with the faster punching Holyfield. That exchange was Bo's. Here we see what happened when Bo kept punching as the referee tried to stop them. Neither one, however, as yet, seems to be putting any real hurt on the other. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Round three begins. George, have you seen Riddick Bo trying to hold Evander behind the head and hit him? Not at all, but I have seen the, uh, Riddick Bo taking every advantage he can. When the refs say break, he hits. Holyfield firing the left twice and landing twice. I say Bo re-established that left jab. What does he need to be throwing right hand? Long left right hand by Holyfield. Oh, 
almost caught Bo flush. As it was, it did a little damage, but not as much as it might have appeared to be the case. Holyfield landing inside. Bo comes right back. A slugging war between the 205-pound Holyfield and the 235-pound Riddick Bo. And I think that 235 Riddick Bo is not the 235 he should have been. He may have scaled too many pounds off his body just to look good for this fight. Do you see him running out of gas after some of these exchanges, George? No, but all of the zip is going out of that big right hand that he had a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Holyfield may beg to differ after he feels it a few more times. Bo with the left hook to the body. Holyfield covering up as Bo whacks away with the left hook. Bo was told by his corner to go to double left hook and then the right hand. Evidently, there's some magic into that. Bo landing the uppercut and the body shot. These are all Bo punches here. Holyfield, for the moment, not active. At some point, Riddick Bo is going to realize, sure, he is hitting me, but it doesn't hurt like it ought to be hurting. And then once that happens, it's going to be a big deal. Left hook landed by Bo after a right. Holyfield seemingly in trouble for the moment. No doubt about it, but he's a storm weatherer. Champion rests his head on Bo's shoulder and stays right there. Holyfield jabbing, trying to get back inside with the jab. Just misses with the right. Bo's corner must be screaming, get back to the jab, go back to the basics. And you saw the uppercut that Bo is so fond of tonight. Thinks he can use it to great effect. Evander hey, Holyfield is having some vision problems. I yeah, can tell by the whole I think the... his right eye is already cut, George. Remember the big cut that he got against Larry Holmes, product of an elbow. It appears to me that there's blood around Holyfield's right eye. Let's look more carefully. There's the left hook by Holyfield. And another, and another, and another. Holyfield wobbles Bo onto the ropes. A series of left hooks, all of them landed flush. Let's go, come on. Right hand by Holyfield. And for the moment, it is Bo who slows down. The boy is starting to play in a play a bad game, leaning in with the old crossover. He's never done it. Why well, start it now? Three rounds of furious give and take. Okay. Now look, go to the dead weight inside. Don't load it up. Okay. Just move your hands. You understand? Okay. Watch it, baby. I'm give you some more. Don't wrestle with me. You, you okay? Mm -hmm. You all right? Okay. Take a deep breath. This guy, he's blowing too, so he's blowing like hell out there, baby. He's blowing like hell. Come on, baby. You just gotta suck, suck it up. All right. Let's take a look at this last exchange with those left hooks by Holyfield, who's trying to set a fast pace and wear Bo down. Bo has never had to fight a long fight at this kind of a pace. Good left hooks, but they just don't hurt enough to make a man cover up and run. All right, suckers out. This fight may come down to conditioning and will over a long haul, George. Do I agree? Conditioning is going out of, out of both now. It's a matter of who wants to be heavyweight champ of the world tonight. Well, for the moment, it may still come down to can Evander Holyfield take all these punches from a bigger man and stand up. He's done it so far, but Bo has not landed full thunder with the right yet. And Evander, every chance he gets, he tries to rush in for a good right-hand shot. Bo keep that left jab working, stays ahead on the judge's court. He can change things tonight. But Evander is still landing that right-hand lead. Riddick Bo lands the right hand. Holyfield falls in, falling right foot after another. He's not keeping his position at all. Left hook inside by Holyfield. Bo's punches are having more effect. Bo goes to the body, and Holyfield covers up. You never want to follow a puncher. Never. You want the puncher following you. Evander Holyfield giving Riddick Bo every chance to whack him out of there. Too much danger, it seems to me, in the first round. holding behind the head by Riddick Bo. And there's the left hook again by Holyfield. Lou Duba has prepared referee Joe Cortez to watch Bo holding behind the head. He loves to do it. Trading punches at center ring. 
This looks a lot like the Burt Cooper okay, fight for Holyfield, but Riddick Bowe, as his handlers will tell you, is no Burt Cooper. Okay, you better believe it. Evander Holyfield didn't need to be in two wars like that in his career. Bowe landing the left to the top of the head and then sticking the jab into Holyfield's mouth. Holyfield again stepping inside for the left hook. Every time Evander lands a good one now, he takes one in return. He has slowed down since rounds one and two. I've never seen a guy so confident of his right hand as Riddick Bow. Even though he misses 16, he'll throw 20 more. There's a right hand shot. Bo must have found it partially blocked by a Holyfield glove. Holyfield with a right hand made the sweat fly off of Bo's head. But Bo seems unhurt. Bo can reestablish that left jab, keep this guy vision days. He can win this thing, but he can't get in there slugging with a guy who wants to slug with him. Well, the question is, is Bo missing a chance to pile up points by not sticking with the left jab and going inside and warring shot for shot with Holyfield? They've both forgotten that there are three judges out there who can also give them as a decision. And if it's a hard fight to score, you have to suspect that Holyfield gets the benefit of the doubt. Low blow, not called by Cortez at first, and now he does. So Holyfield will get time to recover as round four comes to a close. This is an unbelievable pace for Big Man Unbelievable and unnecessary for Riddick Bowe with such a good left jab. Get the hell away from me. Don't try to save time. Keep him up, yeah? Okay. I want to drop tackle in here. All right. All right? He's, he's beginning to time, boy. You got to press him more. In. Look, you're walking in without the jam. You're walking in without the jam. Jab your way in. You keep your punches short. Put the combination. Harold together. Letterman, how do you see the fight after four rounds? Larry, 39, 37, three rounds to one. Riddick Bowe, I think the big guy's winning this fight in a toe to toe battle. I think he's landing the biggest shots. I have the fight two rounds apiece. All right, come on, let's go. Let's go. There's the low blow. We remember from the last time we had a fight with Bo, he threw a lot of low blows. He apologized afterwards, but we might see Amanda Holyfield exact his own price here for that low blow. In round number four, both fighters landed more than half of their punches, but Bo threw more than twice as many. 77 shots for Bo, only 36 for Holyfield. There's a left and a right by Holyfield and a left. Bo giving the right hand in return. Left hand by Holyfield. These are solid shots, but the champion does not seem able to hurt Riddick Bo. That right hand is right in the face, but it just doesn't hurt. I guess that 205 pounds that you scale in, just not enough to drop the bigger boys in the early round. Holyfield getting back to being busy. Doubling up on the jab. Now tripling the jab. His corner no doubt having told him he has to set more of a pace. If Riddick Bo is going to fight at this intensity level. Bo is making a real tactical mistake, tactical mistake. He's looking down whenever he decides to throw to the body. Looks up when he jabs. Got to look a guy over a dead pen him like Joe Lewis, one of the two. Now right and lead again for Evander Holyfield. Hey, Evander Holyfield is getting a break. He's holding. He want to hold a little bit. It's not doing him any good with all that mix-up. He hits this guy with all he has, and the guy comes back and hits him again. But if the rounds stretch out, keep in mind that Evander Holyfield is a veteran of the 12-round route, and Riddick Bowe has never been beyond 10. Sometimes the veterans have the disadvantage because they've got so many wounds. Holyfield with a right and a left, having a little bit better round this time than was the case in stanza number four. I think Bo is starting to coast in and take a second, get the breather at the wrong time. Get the hands on that, get the hands up, get him out. Well, maybe he doesn't have any control over it, George. He's got to take a breather when he's tired, and he's got every right to be tired tonight. But you got to take a breather with your left jab. You can't take a breather just standing around. You got to keep that jab out there. That's your antenna to make sure the other guy takes a breather. Oh, bring up, bring up, 
And you see the length and the crispness of Bo's jab. Recognize what a weapon it can be. Both fighters swelling a little around the eyes. Two rounds ago, we saw them using the end swell on Holyfield's right eye. Cutman Ace Murata doing the job. And there have been no more traces of the blood that I had suspected I saw there earlier. In our discussion with Evander Holyfield, he said that the eye didn't bother him in training at all. But Riddick Bo believes otherwise and made no secret of his intention to go after Evander's right eye. Now, Evander Holyfield is starting to take control with his jab a little more. That was a more measured round. And it was more to Holyfield's liking, I thought. Okay. This guy's gonna run out of gas. Okay. That's it. Yep. And you see, he's run, he run out of gas. Now look, you see, your jab is working good for you. All you gotta do is keep it going. Get, that, so get him the jab at you. His jab is okay. slowed down. Yeah, I'm I'm like, I got it, I got it. Now when you, look. You, 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 only you three, plan this. It's only three. Make him jab, make him jab. Just step back, man. And when you're inside, I'm just throwing those hard double left hooks, double and triple left hooks. Right. And then go with the right hand. You gotta use that jab and keep your left hand high, coming back. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's, he's slowed down considerably. That jab is working good. He can't get off. This guy's dying out now there, keep baby. Keep the jab going. Come on, keep boxing this guy with that jab. Oh, you're going to yeah, you're going to All right, All right go. let's go. Second jab, come on. Come on, turn this guy. Don't take no punches, baby. Get the jab. Drop down and go to the body. Come Both on. corners Stop. asking their fighters for energy. You heard Eddie Futch telling Riddick Bo to double and triple up with the left hook. And you heard George Benton and Lou Duba asking Evander, Hol Evander Holyfield to jab and move. The big rule of thumb is you never throw a left hook with a left hooker. You gotta keep that jab out there, throw a right hand, then your left hook. Holyfield has an excellent left, left hook. So is Eddie giving Riddick the wrong advice? Well, I would say, hey, keep that left hook out of the business. They traded right hands there. It was Holyfield who backed up. Oh, trying to reestablish the jab. And if he does, whenever he does, he takes over the fight. And Holyfield ignoring his corner's instructions to jab and trying to reestablish the left hook inside. The Holyfield is in a new world now. He's starting to have problems with cuts over his eyes, things that he never had before. And he could be a little worried, too. Low blow by Bo, and he got away with it. Cortez says keep it up. So far, Cortez has not deducted a point from Bo, though he's been warned twice for low blow. Great referee. He's really let the guys get out there and do it. Uppercut inside by Holyfield. Action slowing down as is completely understandable. In round six, as Larry Merchant pointed out earlier, it was an unbelievable pace for heavyweights for a while. And the slowing down benefits Rick Bolt. He would like to get comfortable out there and feel at home like in a Spartan ring. And if he does, he's going to take over. Well, Dick, Holy... Dick Gregory, who is Bo's uh, nutritionist guru, fixed him a concoction with seaweed. I hope that concoction gives him some stamina. Of course, Bo calls all of Gregory's concoctions maggot juice, but he says he drank it. Holyfield is playing right into the hand. He's leaning forward, falling over Riddick Bo with his head, trying to just lean on the guy. You don't do that. You get one foot on the other and move around and side to side. And Bo trying to capitalize with the uppercut, and Holyfield comes back with the right-hand lead, which has been so effective for him. He gets back wisely. But now Riddick Bowen is believing he's getting back because he's hurting him. Don't give the young guys courage. Somehow I have the sense that whenever Riddick Bow isn't throwing punches, Evander Holyfield is buying time. And logic tells me the more time the champion can buy, the better his chances become. Let's go, come on. You gotta understand the true meaning of uh, stamina is truly endurance. Endurance is like, who wants it more? Are you willing to take adversity and keep coming no matter what? That's true stamina. You gotta have a reason to fight like that. Nine children or so. <laughs> Both fighters showing their personality. As round six comes to a close, we are halfway home to the 12 round championship distance. This guy can't hit you when you go home. Stay close, stay close. Watch the uppercut. 
Now when it fires at your head, just get down. You understand? Okay. Now look, don't be holding them and grabbing them and sticking too much energy. Now listen, his, his jab is slowed down to nothing. Just take your time and go over top of it with a good right hand. and you probably hit him on the chin. Okay. You understand? Okay. Oh, all right. You, you all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now don't, don't hold him and grab him. You're halfway through. You don't need to grab him. You understand? Okay, right, now let's get your hands off. chant that was orchestrated by his, his manager Rock Newman at ringside. The other half of the crowd or two-thirds of the crowd started to boo. Jabs through round six. Bo has thrown 110 of them and landed 55. Holyfield has landed less than half of his jab. I think we can say this much for Riddick Bo, guys, is that whatever message that Holyfield was trying to send early in the fight, uh, Riddick Bo took the message and came back with his own message. Midway through this fight, he's still in it. So has a very good chance of winning it. Bo lands the right hand over the top. Evander just freezes and looks at him and then comes He was right hurt. Again. Bo didn't realize that he was hurt. And now Evander is reeling as Bo lands the left hook and goes to the body to try to set up the finish. Holyfield peering through the swelling right eye, seemingly having trouble picking up Bo's punches now. It sure would be nice for once if everybody would just scream, Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield. Yeah, if we hear that cheer again, I believe it was Let's Go Bo. Rock Newman was up and leading it, and here they go. Let's Go Bo. It's all going to happen with that jab. And the part of the crowd that supports Holyfield boos lustily when the Let's Go Bo chant breaks up. Now Holyfield begins to punch again, apparently having shaken the cobwebs from that one little pass. He pushed him away with his left side, posing as if he's hurting in the body. I think those below the belt punches are really starting to take some effect on Holyfield. There's also the possibility, George, that Holyfield is allowing Bo to throw in hopes that he will punch himself out. Not at all. Holyfield is taking some right hands. There's no way he can keep doing it. There's another right hand over the top. If it had been anyone else with any lesser heart, they would have been on the canvas right now. Holyfield is probably one of the greater champions of all time. In terms of his will and heart? Probably. Not in terms of his punching power, George. Not at all. He's a good fighter, and he's showing that he's a good fighter now. Bo, if he stays in control with this jab, can just do whatever he wants to do. Punch yourself, guys. Fuck him up. For the moment, it looks more and more like an uphill fight for the champion. Riddick Bo beginning to box again and with a lot of advantages. And every shot he bend the Holyfield throws now is a shot of desperation. It's no longer a tactical shot one after another. Left hook inside. Remember that George Benton told Holyfield to throw the right hand lead over the top of Bo's jab and he thinks that he ought to land it on the chin. But Evander hasn't been able to get that right hand lead off in this round because he's been too busy defending himself against Bo's jabs and right hands. And Bo has started, he should open up with his long left hooks right now because the, side, the right side of Evander's face is taking a beating now. Why, why not just open up with long left hooks, not the short ones? And there in the closing seconds of the round were two Evander Holyfield's right hands to answer my question about where it had gone. All right, he's flipping now. Come on up, come on. Now listen, yeah. If you suck it up, if you suck it up, you got this guy dead to rest. This guy got nothing left. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Now you got to get your shit together. You got to keep a good defense and use that jab. And use it, use the jab and force him to jab. And every damn time he jabs, you just go over top with a big one. And come back with two, three levels. You understand? Because the guy slowed down, hold it feel considerably. He's tired as hell. Let's take a look and see how they're fighting at close quarters. Bo does very, very well for a big man at close quarters. I don't know why Holyfield has been leaning on him, whether he's tired or whether he's been hurt or days from time to time that we haven't seen, but he has done an awful lot of leaning inside. Let's go, hold. And Bo uses that big body well. Right, let's go, come on. 
And in round seven, Holyfield's punch output again went way down, matching round four earlier when he had only thrown 36 punches. This time, down to 31 blows. Now, we've got the Holyfield corner once again, tries to tell the shorter guy to throw jab. No way. Get in there and start mixing it up. Get this young guy tired again, and then start jabbing. Because here's what's happened when you try to jab with the jabber. Holyfield keeping himself away to try to make room for the jab and getting clocked by Bones on left. And now there's blood on the left eye of Evander Holyfield. Is it his or is it Bones? That's the Evander Holyfield's yep, blood. Yep, it's his blood. Not at all. Doesn't like the blood. Okay, it's never going. happened to him constantly okay, like this. He's thinking maybe I've done something wrong in life. I know what it's all about. Good left hook. Holyfield with another left hook. The champion showing his courage, pawing at his left eye to feel the blood and then raging out with a left hook. Both coming back with right hands. Sees an opportunity to perhaps finish okay, things off. Energy levels going back up in round number eight. Nevada is the worst place in the world to get an open cut. Why is that, George? Because it takes too much out of your body. As the water is going as it is, then you start losing blood. One drop seems unimportant to the average person, but a lot to a boxer. Well, Holyfield lost a fair amount of blood from the right eye in his 12-round decision over Larry Holmes. Riddick Bo is doing pretty good, now why would he let the guy lean on him and throw desperation shots at this point? I don't know. Come on, wake up. Maybe he's reached a, t a tired passage again, George. Oh, it's just tight, but just doesn't know what he's doing. Holyfield wants to stay close, out of the range of those big shots. Bo missing the right hand over the top. Holyfield trying to stay inside of it for the moment. Now, Bo is starting to catch those left hooks, putting his hand up. Holyfield twice lands the left and sticks a right to Bo's guard. Bo just missed the right hand. Holyfield lands the uppercut and Riddick comes back with one of his own. Bo's got to realize every punch that Evander throws at this point, they are desperate shots. Stay out of the way of them, you can get yourself hurt. And you saw Bo pawing his right eye. Yeah, he's got his vision impaired just for a bit. I think he might have gotten thumbed there for a second. And there he is pawing the right eye again. Let's see if Holyfield tries to take advantage of that opportunity. He does, and takes a right hand in return. All right, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up. Nobody's going to be given anything. Let's take a look at these two eyes, and the eyes may determine what happens here. If both Riddick Bowe's right eye appears to be closing as they work on Evander Holyfield. Here you see the blood pouring down Holyfield's right eye from the elbow he caught in the fight against Larry Holmes. Here you see him treating him tonight. They've opened, if, if it indeed was close as it looked, it looks as though Bo's eye has reopened. Okay. So Holyfield with a cut above the left eye, Bo with a nick on the right eye. Was it a thumb that did that? It it's was. A shame when something like that happened. It was. It didn't, it didn't look deliberate, but it was effective. Thus, the immediate reaction by both. You get complacent, you spin around, things like that happen. Let's see if the two cut eyes even each other out. I still have the sense that Holyfield is in more trouble than the challenger. Harold, quickly, give us your score, very quickly. Larry, 77, 75, five rounds to three, Riddick Bow. And I want to tell you something, you're fighting with 10 ounce Ray A's, Attached gloves. A guy is not supposed to get thumbed in theory with those gloves. Yeah, but you can't avoid it. I've been thumbed and have accidentally thumbed a lot of people myself. Oh, Bo pounding away to Holyfield's body. For now, the challenger landing two or three shots for everyone he takes from the champion. Holyfield trying to come back with the jab. Oh, 
good left jab by Bo. This jab makes you dizzy. It makes you fall forward. It makes you not be able to see for a minute. And also likely to make Holyfield worry and feel negative about the eye, something that he'd prefer not to think about. Holyfield is actually falling forward on his, the point of his feet now. But I think Riddick's right eye is closing up, George. And now Evander starts to stick the jab with more effect as Bo seems to struggle with his vision. Now a right hand by Bo sends Holyfield into the ropes. But the champion begins to bounce again. Trading right hands. Again, it was Bo's, which appeared to be more effective. No doubt Bo has won the battle of the right hands tonight. But the night is far from being over. At the same time, George, you have to question his hitting power. 235-pound man beating on a 205-pound man has landed a number of clean blows and never seems to have truly stunned Holyfield. He's not truly landed any clean blows yet. Holyfield catches the shot, but his face is partially turned at all times and his gloves on top of the head turns that head instinctively. He's a hard guy. He's dynamic, even when he's steel. And let's face it, the champion has a massive heart. He's proven that over and over. Right uppercut by Holyfield. Momentarily stuns Bo. Low blow by Bo. Cortez pushes them away. Bo has been instructed by his corner. When they warn you, don't move back. Keep throwing shots. Because it doesn't work to his advantage to listen to the referee. Last minute has been a little bit kinder to Evander Holyfield. He's been doubling up on some shots. Crowd booing Cortez's actions. Both fighters basically ignoring the referee. Right hand by Holyfield. And again, he shook the sweat off of Bo, but didn't move the man. Whenever Bo gets in trouble, he throws one to the booty. Holyfield can't see anything at this point. Now, before you take a point away, stop that shit. Why don't you watch your fight? How about those blood blows? All right, Holyfield, you got to get the iron on that eye. Let me take care of this. Come on. Yeah, Holyfield, you got to suck it up. Now, this guy's going down, too. Yeah, Bob, Eddie. Holyfield. Pull it up for me. Come on. Ronnie, with the water. Ronnie, water. Pull it up. Red, here. Give me the water. The water, the water. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We got to be busier, busier, boy. Busier. Check us out. Let's go. Let's go. All right, thank you. Okay, let's, you saw the low blow there, but the referee, despite the number of those low blows, has not taken a point away from Riddick Bowes yet. Round 10 begins. If they complete this round, Riddick Bowe will have gone just as far as he's ever gone before in a professional prize fight. Riddick, Riddick Bowe is able to land three good combinations now. Evander Holyfield can have his first visit to the campus. He's been a gentleman all this time. He can't understand someone being so dirty. So you see Holyfield going down in this round, and Bo stuns him with an uppercut. And just like that, the champion struggles to stay on his feet. What a heart by Holyfield. He's going to stay on his feet. He's hanging in there. Gets away from a right hand, blocks another one. Bo throwing and throwing. Now goes to the body. Holyfield somehow standing up, but staying Referee. too close Referee. to Bo. Joe Cortez watching. Champion gets the benefit of the doubt. That was a right uppercut that started that sequence. Now, Bo has got to start all over again. And Don't Holyfield try to... weathers the storm and comes back throwing. If Bo starts over all over again, he can do it all over again. Let's see if he has the patience. Evander Holyfield's incredible powers of recovery once again on display. Remember how he came back from the knockdown against Cooper and threw one of the great left hooks you've ever seen about 30 seconds later? At that time, Evander could see. This time, Evander, Evander Holyfield has no vision at all. That left jab has been the most devastating thing in his life. Holyfield is only resting from all of those punches he threw. And Holyfield goes back to the right-hand lead. It's been the only weapon which has been consistently good to him tonight. Don't rest. Rest with your jab. Bo should be taking that kind of advice.
Look at Holyfield. What a warrior. Reversing the tide of the battle. The champion now has Bo Wobbly. And he lands the right hand. Everybody in the Thomas and Mack Center on their feet. It doesn't bother Bo because he knows he was only resting at that point. Evander Holyfield has got a heart. If he Wait weighs 205, his heart weighs about 204. This is an amazing show, guys. I don't think he can win the fight at this rate. But just to have recovered from that beating is astonishing, I think, to most of us at ringside. If he can, Bo goes right back to the left jab, start all over, forget he's knocked this guy almost out. Go back to the left jab, start everything off. It can all happen again. This round should be greeted with a standing ovation at the end. You've seen the best of both men. A right hand by Holyfield. And another. Round 10 continues after the bell. folks because what you saw in this round it doesn't get much better than this Holyfield staggering into the corner Bo after him the young man but that conditioning and those recuperative powers how can you believe that a fellow who looks like this in the first minute and a half is going to dominate the second minute and a half of the round because Riddick Bo threw every little punch and mile of road work away now let's take a look at Holyfield coming back what a thoroughbred that man is. I don't know if he's got enough to mount the stretch run and win the round, but he is some thoroughbred. Four times in his career, Vander Holyfield has gone 12 rounds or further. Riddick Bowe now steps into unknown territory for him in round number 11. Neither fighter totally exhausted yet. Field in serious trouble now. The bow has got to be cool oh, 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 trying to finish him, though. There's the uppercut again. The mouthpiece is out of Holyfield's mouth, and he's got to go down. And Holyfield gets up very early in the count. Second time in his career, he's been knocked down. First time he has actually gone to the canvas. It could be all over for Evander Holyfield's heavyweight championship reign. He is not fighting back and seems to have no will to do so. To get out of this round would seem like a miracle. Bo is not the finisher, but he sure is a puncher. And when you are a clean finisher, finisher takes years to know how to do it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, stop punching. Holyfield is going for the dance now. Champion begins to bounce again. And once again, just as was the case in round 10, Holyfield unbelievably tries to seize the initiative. It seems Bo is right up because he's the one, a little off the shot off a gut does more damage than anything he's doing. Yeah, that's the punch which has badly hurt Holyfield twice. Holyfield is elusive. He can survive. It's to his advantage that the boxing does not continue. Stay close as long as you can. You must know people don't pay you millions of dollars for nothing. Once the tide gets tough, you got to fight anyway. When it turns against you, keep fighting. Right hand lead by Holyfield brought his supporters in the crowd out of their seats again. But Holyfield is spent, it seems now. His handlers call him the best conditioned athlete in the world he'll have to be to make it out of this. This is a prime example of managing and training too many fighters at one time. You get into the corner and you just don't know what instruction to give what guy. Holyfield still punching. Still throwing the left hook inside and the right hand lead. But Uppercut by Holyfield. from the champion's mouth. His eyes
eyes almost oh, completely oh, shut. But he will not take KO for an answer oh, in oh, round oh. number 11. Okay, here's the early over. action in that round. As Bo's uppercut seriously hurt Holyfield. This guy got nothing. Where's the idea? You understand? Now bring yourself back to life. Hey, come on, you're lost, John. You gotta do it. Come here. Listen, Daddy. Last round. Uh-huh. Here it is, boys. Last round. Last round. Get your right, put your guys all down. All right, it's the last round of touch gloves, right? Okay. Well, Settle down, pick your shot on You understand? Finally, you did it with Buster Buck, because you've been doing it against the air. Let's go, right? Hey, you hit him in the body. This has been a fight between a junkyard dog from Georgia and a big old Great Dane from Brooklyn. Amen to that. I love, the world's going to love that big Great Dane because he's, he'll lick you, but he'll also bite you. If punched at number square with the judges' impressions, Evander Holyfield must need a knockout to save his heavyweight championship. Harold Letterman, give us your quick Larry, 107-101, eight rounds to three, Riddick Bowe. I have Riddick Bowe in a commanding six-point lead. I have to suspect that the other judges are pretty close to that number, maybe just a little bit tighter, but Holyfield seems to understand that he would need a knockout. He does not seem to have the ammunition to go after it. Evander Holyfield groomed himself through his cruiserweight career to ultimately gain the weight and the musculature necessary to compete for the heavyweight championship of the world. He thought through all of the years he would have to fight and beat Mike Tyson to get it. In the end, it didn't happen that way. And the public has consistently penalized this man for not having won the championship from Tyson, but rather from an overweight, out of shape Buster Douglas. Tonight, he wanted to prove his legitimacy. And if nothing else, he has proven what we already knew about him. Extraordinary courage, spectacular heart and will. What he hasn't had is the muscle and the size to compete with Riddick Bull. I think for once, I'd like to hear the crowd say, Holy field, holy field. This guy deserves it. Ironically, of course, he may be earning more respect in his first defeat than he has earned in his 28 victories. We can't say defeat yet. You never know what these judges are going to do. It's like a beauty contest. Riddick Bowe has withstood criticism, called a dog and a slacker by many earlier in his career. When Rock Newman took him on as a management project, some of Rock Newman's friends and allies in boxing told him, no, don't bother with Riddick Bowe. He won't get anywhere. But Newman and Bowe believed in each other. They made it here tonight. And it appears that the big man from Brooklyn is about to make it pay off. I can tell you one thing, that terminology of the St. Bernard and the Junkyard Dogs, they belong to me. Larry stole them from me. <laughs> I gave it to them. Not the first great idea that we've stolen from you, George, and it won't be the last. Hold ahead, hold ahead. I was only teasing, kind of. From the back of the arena now, they begin to rise and applaud what has been an extraordinary battle between two men of heart and will and courage and skill. said earlier that a lot of people came here, Jim, expecting a, uh, a change of administrations in the heavyweight division. And right now, most people here probably think they're getting one. As we said, this has not been a great year for, or a great month for incumbents. The seeds were sown 
in Holyfield's difficult title George defenses go? against you, George Foreman, That's right. against Bert Cooper, man. a war in which, out, in which he was almost knocked out, against Larry Holmes, in which his eye was badly cut, and he wound up having to brook considerably more difficulty than most had thought would be the case. There's a melee in Bo's corner now. As we look at a replay from round number 11, the kind of punishment that Holyfield absorbed through most of the last two rounds, indeed much of the last three rounds, he was almost out in round number 10. What is the disturbance, Larry? All right, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Chuck Jampa scores about 115 to 112. Jerry Roth scores at 117 to 110. And Dalby Shirley, 117 to 110 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick. of him is manager Rock Newman told me this morning that he couldn't believe through all the effort he had put in to get to this point that Friday the 13th of November had finally arrived I said Rock you're gonna build a stable of fighters he said when Riddick Bowe is gone I'll be gone too and here is the fallen champion beaten but perhaps more champion tonight than ever before. Never seen a such a spectacular heavyweight fight. Evander Holyfield well, is going to be top. That could be a great rematch, mind you. Oh, I think there'll be tremendous public demand after what we saw tonight. Rematch is needed. But we'll be getting to the business of the heavyweight division in just a few minutes. There are lots of wrinkles to observe. Riddick Bowe has signed contracts which obligate him to fight Lennox Lewis, the man who knocked out Razor Ruddock in London two weeks ago. There's widespread speculation that Bo and Newman have a different plan. Final punch stat numbers, George. Let's look and see what the tale of punch count statistics will tell us. And one thing that it will demonstrate, which I think is the ultimate difference in the fight, is that the bigger, stronger man, Bo, was also the much busier fighter tonight. You, I guess, will attribute that to Holyfield's closed eyes and the difficulty he had mounting both an offense and a defense in the late round. That's right. He couldn't see most of the time. The left jab, whenever it would land consistently in the two rounds, the next round afterwards, he just wasn't good at it. Why was it such a war? Well, look at the connect percentages. Both fighters landing at least half of their punches in the fight. Don't jab with a jabber, I said, in the early rounds. And that was part of the story, too. Bo landing twice as many jabs in the bout as Evander Holyfield. They were also the more effective ones. No doubt about it. He was so far away from him. All right, let's go. Let's go. I want you to know something, Bo. I'm not afraid of you, Lennox. And we're going to get it on. I owe you one. Okay. You're not the man I thought you were. You lied on me. I thought we was cool. Yo, bring it on, man. Yeah, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring you. You should number the word. Brady Roddick was afraid of you. I'm gonna knock you out. He's a chump. I'm gonna knock nothing out, Bob. I'm gonna knock you out. I'm gonna knock nothing 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 out. I'm gonna knock stacks up with those of his historical predecessors. Riddick Bowe has fought 40 months in his career. He is equal to Muhammad Ali, fourth on the list for having won the title earliest in his career, only behind Leon Spinks, Mike Tyson, and Joe Lewis. 
and in terms of the number of rounds he has fought to get to this level, again, Bo is fourth on the list. Only Ali, Tyson, and Spinks, having fought fewer rounds in their careers by the time they had won the heavyweight championship. All right, joining us now at ringside is the brand-new heavyweight champion of the world. Let me be among the first to call you champ. And congratulations, Riddick. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations to you, Eddie Futch, as well. I have to suspect that you discovered early on in the fight that when he hit you, he didn't hurt you all that much. And then you decided that you could go ahead and be aggressive and turned out to be much more aggressive than he was. Well, first of all, I want to thank God and give him praise for giving me strength and courage. Uh, I told you, Evander, all you experts, you underestimate your your my, my stamina, my punching power. You know, Bert Cooper knocked Evander fell in the road, I knocked him down. Uh, you can't take him away from him, he put up a hell of a fight. And um, I'm just looking forward to the future. And your vindication is that you win not just with power shots, but with your heart, your will, your stamina, and your boxing ability. Man, I, was in, I was in the best shape of my life. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to prove to the world, Lennox Lewis, George Foreman, those who probably say, you know, Ivana wasn't the man he was. But again, I must say, he came in, he has the, the heart of a lion. I had him in trouble, came fighting back. And uh, I had to dig deep myself. In a way, he was more impressive tonight than he has been in many of his victories, wasn't he? Yes, indeed. But I told you, I was the better man. Anytime you match a good big man against a little man, usually if the good big man is in shape and willing to go through whatever, uh, he will win. Now, Lennox Lewis is here to watch, and you have a score to settle yeah, against that, Lennox that, Lewis. That big, ugly bum, Lennox couldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. Uh, again, I'm looking forward to exposing him. He ain't nothing but a, a big uh, arm puncher, and uh, Razor Roddick was perhaps uh, afraid of him. But I'm going to show you people how to beat Lennox Lewis. But there are a lot of people who suspect that you might want to fight this big man first right here. What well, are your thoughts about him? Well, my manager can work out. I'll knock Big George out, too. I'm going to start right now. I just want to celebrate with you, man. Okay, you owe me a big old George. ice cream cone and a hamburger. Hey, George, can I do something I want to do for a long time? All right, let me, oh, man. Let me, let me, let me oh, kiss the dog. Man. Oh, oh, man. man. All right, well, there's a new era in boxing history. Mike Tyson, man, I wish you luck. Come on home, man, I wish you the best. Thanks for all the information, man. And I mean that. The brand new heavyweight champion, the highly entertaining Riddick Bowe. We're going to see a lot of it. Now let's go to the locker room where Larry Merchant stands by with the vanquished former champion, Evander Holyfield. Evander, you've said before that if you gave your all in defeat, you would walk away from it with your head high. Do you feel that way right now? Well, I feel, I feel the way, and, and I want to thank God, and, you know, for, you know, giving me the strength and ability to go on out there to get my very best. I have to take my head off the Reddit bow, and it's not that, you know, I fought a lot of the fight. It's just he fought a, a better fight tonight, and he showed that he had more. And, you know, in all, I gave my all, and he was just able to match, you know, what I had. Were you surprised, say, early in the fight, when you were seeming to try to send him a message that he answered back as strongly and with as much determination as he did? No, I wasn't surprised that anybody can uh, answer back, you know, when they're fresh. You know, he, I knew that he had a lot of ability, he had quickness and all that. Uh, you know, I, I felt that, you know, in later rounds that, you know, he would, you know, he would fold a little bit, but he showed determination throughout the whole fight. <clears throat> So you were surprised even though the corner was telling you that it looks like he's getting weaker and he even looked like he was getting weaker that he still kept kept coming back and coming back. Well yeah, and, you know, he and, you know, I you know, I hit him with good shots and he was able to, you know, use the jab and he was able to use the leverage and the height. He you know, he fought a tremendous fight for his height. He really did. You were cut, you had problems with your eyes. What effect did that have on your fight? Well, you know, I caused the blood running in my eye, but, you know, I realized that, you know, I had been cut before, and, and I, and, you know, within me, I always felt that I could win. Even throughout the, the last round, I kind of felt that things can happen and that, you know, that I could, you know, get a good shot out and get him out of there. And, you know, I pressed on through the end of the fight. And, uh, but he, 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 was, he withstood the pressure and he kept fighting. What do you remember about the round where he had you really in trouble, reeling around the ring like a sailboat without a rudder, and yet by the second half of the round you were on top of him? Can you give us your recollection of that round? Well, you know, he, you know, he, you know, hit me with a lot of great shots, and he, he, you know, knocked me pillow to pole. And but you know, within my mind, I said, you know, I think I got him. He think he had me, 
and you know I, you know, well, you know, I knew eventually that he was gonna give up because I wasn't going anyway. Even though he was knocking me off balance, he hit me with clean shots, but I was able to take them shots. And I felt that, you know, if this is around, that I have the better chance to take him out because I'm going to catch him, you know, very spent. But, you know, he was able to, you know, even though I came back in that round, he was able to take it. Do you think in the end this was a case of a good, young, big man against a good, smaller man? Well, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I never, you know, go in and, and measure the size. You know, I just felt that uh, he was able to top what I had today. And, you know, I, everybody have their day. I did the best I could. And whatever the best, he, he had enough. My best wasn't good enough tonight. And he proven it by, you know, by going out there and doing what he did. How does it strike you, Evander, that perhaps in defeat, finally, you will get the kind of respect that wasn't as forthcoming when you were the champion? Well, you know, I, you know, it would be amazing if I do, but... I, um, uh, you know, I feel that you know, only thing a man can ever do is give his best. And, and with all the previous fight, I gave my best. Tonight, I gave my best. And you know, and it's still up to the people to decide what they want to sign. And uh, with me, on improver, I see, seek as the Lord approver. If I can go out there and do the best and uh, and give thanks to the Lord for me being able to go out and do my best. Do you want to fight again? No, not really. I'm. Just, I, I had enough. I'm, you know. I sh you know, I went out there and I did my all, and but you know, I'm a, I'm a rest. But you know, right now how I feel, you know, I don't even want to see no glove for a while. Well, whatever you decide, we're with you. Thank you for all the great fights, and especially thanks for this incredible display tonight. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Now back to ringside. All right, Larry, thanks very much. And now I find myself a junior middleweight between two massive heavyweights as joining George and me here at ringside is the man who off his title eliminator knockout of Razor Ruddock two weeks ago now has the written contractual right to fight Riddick Bo for the heavyweight championship of the world. First of all, Lennox Lewis, your impressions of the war between Bo and Holyfield. I thought it was a good, solid performance by Riddick Bo. You know, he did what he had to do. I think that Evander Holyfield is a great champion, and he went out like a champion. And his reign as a champion was great as well. Uh, you've known Bo longer than any of the rest of us, being the man who vanquished him at the Olympic Games for a gold medal. Is that about the best Riddick can fight? Yeah, I think that's the best that Riddick can fight. He hasn't met nobody like Lennox Lewis. He's looking to sidestep Lennox Lewis, but let's hope he doesn't. Let's hope I don't have to call him Chicken Bo. Well, we'll get to sidestepping in just a moment. Now, as Bo made his way down out of the ring to come over for our interview with him after the fight, he said something to you, and a small fracas broke out. What was the exchange? He was saying, basically, he ain't afraid of me, and he'll fight me any day. And I said, I'm going to knock you out the same way I knocked you out in the Olympics. But even though you have the legal right to fight him next, a lot of people believe that he is going to bypass you, at least for the moment, to fight this big guy, George Foreman. Is that what you think is going to happen? Well, I think he's afraid that his, his reign as champion is going to be short. That's why he feels that he has to sidestep me. Will you offer step-aside money to George to try to get him to move out of the picture and secure your right to fight him next? Perhaps, you know, we're going to have to go to the negotiating table and see what happens. Anything can happen. All right, Lennox, thanks very much once again for joining us, and we wish you best of luck, regardless of how the legal situation turns out. George Foreman, what about all this speculation? Surely you've had some communication from Rock Newman and Riddick Bowe's people about the possibility, they say specifically, of a fight in Beijing, China. You going to do it? I'll tell you, I've enjoyed this. is one of the best heavyweight fights I've seen in my life. I'm enjoying this now as a partial and uh, uh, impartial journalism journalist and I, all I said is a great war I'm happy I'm not a boxer tonight I'm with you I'm a reporter and let's tell it like it was <laughs> meaning that you're dodging the question in front of the entire printed press in front of Lennox Lewis in front of a lot of people who want one to know you gotta understand I am number one contender with the IBF so. so you're not ruling out the possibility if they offer you the fight I'd fight him tomorrow you will fight him tomorrow, tomorrow can you beat him oh no doubt about it uh, I'm a little more experienced I'm a bit taller I'm not a blown up light heavyweight uh, probably, but I'm not going to rain on Riddick Bowe's uh, night. This is his night. Let him enjoy it. He's in history now. I love him. His mother's proud of him, and let's just enjoy with him. George, we always talk about your weight, and you said when you fought Holyfield at 250 plus that it was too many. How many would be the right number against Riddick Bowe? Uh, back to 257 now. I'd bulldog him, bump him. Oh, you got me saying it again. Belly bump him. I quit. 
this guy is smarter than... <laughs> <laughs> Not that smart, George. I've just been around you long enough. All right, thanks very much. We enjoyed Thank it. You. Another great heavyweight show. Larry Merchant, your final comments on a tremendous battle of wills and skill. Yeah, I think that... Uh, I think first and foremost, we have to congratulate the two fighters for putting everything on the line. And, and that's what prize fighting is, should be about and always isn't. Um, they left nothing in the dressing room, nothing in the gym. They gave the people the kind of uh, demonstration of uh, intestinal fortitude and sheer will that this game is really about. You know, before the fight, I started to think to myself, is this a case of a good big man against a good small man? Is this a case of a big man against a, a very good small man or a very, very good big man against a small man? I don't know how you put it all into the equation, but I think undoubtedly that his youth, his hunger, his will, uh, and his size helped Riddick Bo get through uh, to win the championship against a man who showed us uh, why he is such an exceptional athlete to have been able to win the heavyweight championship as big uh, or as not as big as he is. Um, there are no words that can uh, equal or top what we saw tonight. Absolutely mm -hmm. right. So Evander Holyfield's two-year reign as heavyweight champion comes to an end. Whether he remains a force in the division or even active for that matter remains to be seen. And for the second time in the past four heavyweight championship tenures, the champ is a kid from the Brownsville streets of Brooklyn. This one, an entirely different personality from the menacing Mike Tyson. Riddick Bowe, a big, happy clown much of the time, but as he demonstrated tonight in the ring, a man with enough anger and will to take on the heart and will champion of the heavyweight division and beat him up before a big crowd in the Thomas and Max Center and a live audience and a television audience all around the world. It was spectacularly exciting stuff and we're happy that you were here to share it with us. We'll follow to see what happens next in the heavyweight division. Meanwhile, be sure to join us for our next telecast as we bring in exciting triple header featuring middleweight champion James Tony, super middleweight champion Iran Barkley, and the potential champion of tomorrow, undefeated middleweight Roy Jones. All three fights coming your way at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific, Saturday, December 5, right here on HBO. Also join us for a very special documentary looking at 100 years of heavyweight history in this corner, boxing's legendary heavyweights looks at champions like John L. Sullivan, Jack Johnson, Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, and Muhammad Ali as they've never been seen before. You'll see some rare footage and hear unique stories about these legends of the ring. It premieres Tuesday, December 8 at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern and Pacific on HBO. So now for Larry Merchant, George Foreman, and Harold L